Hi everyone. Today we're diving into the art of blending meads. Whether you want to tweak flavors or create exciting new styles, or just rescue a batch that didn't go quite as planned, blending offers limitless creative possibilities. We'll cover key blending styles like Sizer, Piment, and Braggot, explore advanced techniques, and discuss how to balance acidity, tannins, and sweetness. I'll also walk through some helpful tips from the BJCP, which is the Beer Judge Certification Program guidelines to make sure your blends meet top level standards. But before we dive in, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell for more exciting mead making tips and techniques. And as a little thank you for joining me today, grab my free ebook, Mead Making at Home Easily, using the link in the description or the pinned comment below. It's packed with my mead making process and advanced techniques to elevate your mead making skills. So let's jump right in. Let's start with some classic blends you'll find in the BJCP guidelines. First up is Sizer, which falls under the fruit mead category M2A. Sizer is a blend of mead and apple cider, bringing the crisp acidity of the apples together with the sweetness of honey. This style works great when your mead needs some brightness to lift the flavor profile. According to the BJCP, it's best to use apple varieties with higher acidity to create a well-balanced drink. Sizers can range from dry to sweet, and letting the cider ferment naturally can give you a lovely sparkle for a seasonable drink. Next, we have the Piment, another fruit mead, style category M2B. Piments combine mead with grapes or grape juice, giving you a drink that blends wine-like tannins and acidity with honey's smooth sweetness. The BJCP emphasizes that balance is key with piments. Using high acid grapes can complement the honey, but you don't want the grape character to overpower the honey notes. Whether you use red grape for a bold piment or white grapes for something light and floral, these meads also age beautifully, just like wine. Now let's talk about the braggot, listed under specialty mead M4B in the BJCP guidelines. A braggot blends mead with beer and you can use any beer style you like. This makes it an incredibly versatile option. Whether you go with an IPA for citrus and bitterness or a stout for deep roasted notes, the BJCP suggests that the honey and malt should complement each other with neither overpowering the blend. Brackets work well with carbonation, adding a lively element to the final product. Now let's talk about balancing flavors, which is crucial in mead blending. According to the BJCP standards, a great mead should have harmony between acidity, tannins, and sweetness. Acidity gives your blend brightness and energy, and you can boost it by blending in cider, piments, or fruit-forward meads. Tannins, on the other hand, provide structure and mouthfeel. These are usually introduced through grapes, oak aging, or certain fruits. If your blend feels too soft or flat, Adding a tannin-rich mead like an oak-aged one can give it the lift it needs. Sweetness ties everything together. If your blend is tasting too sharp or dry, add a sweeter mead or stabilize the batch and back sweeten with honey. The BJCP advises careful stabilization to prevent re-fermentation, which is a common issue if unfermented sugars are added without proper treatment. So let's get into some more advanced blending techniques. One of the best ways to introduce complexity is by using oak aged meads. The oak adds subtle flavors like vanilla, caramel, or spice, which can bring depth to lighter blends. If you're using oak chips, be sure to monitor them carefully. Oak can quickly become overpowering if left too long. Spice meads are an excellent way to add character. Think vanilla, cinnamon, ginger, or clove. These spices can bring warmth and complexity, especially for holiday or winter blends. Just be cautious as spices can intensify over time. Fruit forward meads are perfect for adding vibrant, fresh notes to your blends. According to the BJCP, a good fruit weed should balance the fruit character with the honey sweetness. Blending with berries or stone fruits introduces bright acidity and complexity. For example, mixing blackberry with cherry creates a deep, rich blend with a touch of tartness. If you really want to take your blends to the next level, try creating multi-fruit melomels. The idea here is to build complexity that unfolds with every sip. BJCP guidelines recommend matching fruits that balance acidity and sweetness. For example, peach and raspberry 
bring a smooth mix of sweet and tart, while blueberry and elderberry offer deep earthy undertones. Adding fruits at different fermentation stages also helps develop distinct layers, enhancing the overall complexity of the blend. So let's go a little deeper into braggots, one of the most exciting ways to blend mead with beer. The BJCP highlights that honey and malt components should work together without overwhelming each other. Collaborating with local breweries is a fun way to experiment with different styles. For example, using a Saison adds fruity and spicy notes, while a barrel-aged stout gives you a rich, dessert-like braggot. You can also play with carbonation to add a refreshing pop to the final product. For a more subtle twist, you can experiment with infusion blending. Adding herbal teas or spices post-blend introduces unique aromatics. BJCP guidelines for specialty meads encourage this kind of experimentation, as long as the flavors stay balanced. Infusing with lavender or mint makes a refreshing summer drink, while black or green tea brings tannins and a touch of bitterness. Just remember, infusions intensify over time, so start small and taste frequently. Blending isn't always easy, so let's cover a few common challenges and how to solve them. If one element in your blend becomes overpowering, the BJCP recommends diluting with a neutral mead or balancing with acidity or tannins. If your blend tastes disjointed, give it time to rest. Flavors often need time to meld. Adding a small amount of honey or oak can also act as a bridge between competing flavors. To avoid re-fermentation after blending, make sure to stabilize the batch with a potassium sorbate or Camden tablets before adding the unfermented sugars. And if your blend comes out cloudy, cold crash, or use fining agents like bentonite can help clear things up. I personally cold crash on everything. I don't put sulfites or bentonite. A lot of people do. I do not. I believe in cold crashing and, and time. So final thoughts. Blending meads is both an art and a science. Whether you're exploring classic styles like Sizer, Piment, and Braggot, or experimenting with multi-fruit melomels or herbal infusions, Blending allows you to fine-tune your meads to perfection. Following the BJCP guidelines helps ensure your blends are well-balanced and competition-ready. The key is to start with small test batches, document your ratios, and let your blends rest to develop their full potential. Once you find the perfect mix, scale it up and enjoy the fruits of your labor. Well, thanks for joining me today. Now it's your turn. Grab some meads, experiment with blends, and see what you can create. And if you enjoyed this video and got some helpful tips from it, please hit that like button and subscribe for more mead making tips. And remember, you can grab my free ebook, Mead Making at Home Easily, using the link in the description or pinned comment below. And if you're interested in more mead making tips, check out my other mead making videos over here. Cheers to your mead making adventure. Happy mead making. See you next time.